So what is up guys, this is Nick here from Everything Tech and welcome to this episode of the HTC Desire 626 full review. Now I know that intro, we were on the rocks, we were by the water, but now, you know, we're back at the office. The reason I didn't create the review there is because it's a little bit distracting and I didn't bring the tripod and the wind noise would have been annoyingly unbearable. So we came back to the office for clear and crispy audio so you can easily hear this review. So we're going to do what we usually do here on Everything Tech and go through each part of the phone. And this review should be under 10 minutes. So anyways, let's get into that right now. Let's go. All right, guys, so let's kick this off with a hardware tour. So on the front of the device, you're going to find yourself a 1280 by 720 HD display, and you're going to find yourself a 2 megapixel camera up at the top, speaker grill here, and a speaker grill here, but the sound of the speaker only comes out here, so this would just be for talking. Up at the top, you're going to find yourself a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Going on to the right side, you're going to find yourself a volume up, a volume down, a power button, nothing towards the bottom. At the bottom, you're going to find yourself a micro USB port. Flipping it around to your backside, you're going to see the HTC logo, an 8 megapixel camera here with an LED flash, a mic port here, and some FCC branding right here. And right here is going to be the door for your SIM card and your micro SD card expansion slot. So if you open that up, you're going to see right in there, um, you're going to see a SIM slot right there. And right here is going to be SD card, which is expandable up to 200 gigabytes. So in this section, we're going to talk about build quality. And the HTC Desire 626 has pretty good build quality overall. It's a plastic device, polycarbonate feel or shell. And uh, overall, it doesn't feel too creaky or nothing like that. I did hear a little bit of creak here and there, but nothing that's going to really, you know, make you upset about your purchase in this HTC. This device actually feels pretty well built. So build quality is a win. And this is, I'm not sure if this is Gorilla Glass, but the glass seems pretty good. Didn't scratch in my pocket or anything like that. Okay, so let's get into software. Now you're going to see this is running HTC Sense 7 with blink feed and HTC skinning going on here. So if you're used to HTC One, M9, M8, this is going to be very similar software here on the HTC Desire. But let's go on to settings and confirm the Android version that it is running. If we go down to about and we scroll over until we see a software information at the bottom here, we're going to see that we are running Android version 5.1 with Sense 7.0. So that is what we are running in terms of software. Now, HTC includes a few things in here, such as the Zoe feature right here, which allows you to create uh, photo memories and things such as that. Also, some skinned icons like the uh, voice recorder. So this is HTC included, their weather app, a few other things like Samsung would do on their devices as well as LG. Now, this is the Boost Mobile version, but don't mind that. You're going to have bloatware if you get this phone on T-Mobile as well. It doesn't matter. This phone is available for multiple carriers. So, you know, this is just the Boost version, though. And then we have their own camera skin. Everything is skinned out here, although it's a very light skin and it's kind of standard. I don't think it stands out too much. It um, It's not like really in your face, but it basically is a basic quick OS and uh, nothing too fancy, nothing too uh, amazing either, I would say. But that's just my opinion. You may love HTC's design, but personally, I think it's just kind of a, a vanilla, you know, stock basic skin on top of Android. All right, guys, so how is the performance on this device? And I can tell you that the performance is uh, average. I'm not going to say it's amazing. Um, it is not slow by no means. And if you're coming from a cheaper, older prepaid phone or something like that, this is going to feel pretty quick. It has 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, but it has the Snapdragon 210 processor, not the Snapdragon 400 or 410, which are pretty good screamers at that price point. So this is the 210 with 1.5 gigs of RAM. Adreno 304 GPU and overall all that mumbo jumbo means is that you're going to get adequate decent performance but it's nothing that's going to be so quick that you're going to be amazed like you're going to find on maybe the HTC One M9 or the more higher end but overall basic tasks as you can see they function just fine there's going to be no problems there but I know so I notice sometimes you got to hit the screen twice to get things to go as you can see there's like three swipes right there as you can see I'm, I'm hitting it like three times just before it can go out so now that may just be because i'm doing that too fast but overall i find that here and there there's a stutter and a little glitch here and there so overall performance i'm going to give it maybe a six or seven out of ten nothing that's going to disappoint you but it's just not going to be like wow this phone is so fast 
All right, guys, so let's talk negative aspects of the phone. Before we talk about my positive aspects, I just want to talk about what I found that is not very enjoyable here on the phone. So um, when we go into settings and we go down into, let's see, storage, you're going to see that we only have two point something gigs left. So 2.73 gigs available and HTC Sense takes up almost all of the eight gigs and it just doesn't make sense and it's very annoying. And I don't care if you can expand this 200 gigabytes. I want some space on the phone itself because cash builds up, apps take up space. So you want at least, I'd say 10 gigs available to have a very enjoyable Android experience to put all your apps on there. Um, Unless you're one of those people who rock out with like only five apps and this phone will be just fine for that. But over time when that cache builds up, it's going to get annoying. Another negative aspect of this phone is that sometimes you have to double tap things to get things to open. The touch response on the screen is not the best I've ever seen overall. Another annoying thing about this phone is that they put this speaker grill here and the speaker grill here, but it only fires out one side, which, you know, it's kind of misleading. You would see these two and you would think that you could hold it like this and the audio would be firing at you both ways, but it does not. Another thing that I didn't like too much about this phone is that even though it's a five inch screen, it's quite a reach for people with small hands. It's a really tall and skinny phone. So thin, yes, not the thinnest in the world, thin, but it's a real long reach because of these bezels right here this thick border right here. Also, you just have to, you know, do some hand gymnastics to get your hand all the way up there. So you can't go from here to here to here to here easily unless you have big hands like I do. But I know most people don't have big hands like I do. So that's a little bit of an annoying thing there. What else? Um, I don't think there's really too much other to say about the phone. It's just the storage. It's a little bit, you know, slow for today and age there's a lot of phones that are quicker than this at this price point this comes in at 129 bucks or so and uh even i think the lumia 640 is quicker than this device but overall yeah that's pretty much the negative things i would have to say about this device so now my positive aspects the positive aspects are is the screen is crystal clear it's a very clear screen and it's very enjoyable screen for what you get the back camera is also pretty good for what you get and we're going to talk more about that and show samples in the camera samples also, you do get an LED flash at this price point, which is nice. And the build quality and the look of the device is solid. So that's another positive aspect. It doesn't look like a cheap phone if you're using it around, you know, somebody who has a more expensive phone. You're not going to feel like you have a cheap ass phone. It looks pretty good overall. It looks kind of like the, the more expensive One M9, but just it's plastic. So that's cool. Also, I think HTC Sense software doesn't get in the way of the performance too much like you would see on something like touch Wiz or LG skin those get in the way a little bit more than this device this is kind of like stock Android with a little bit of theming going on so that's another positive aspect another positive aspect is you can change these home buttons down here and you could theme out this phone similar to what you would do in a Samsung Galaxy Assist so if you go into settings you go to personalization you can see you can change the navigation buttons here and you could turn off screen here so if you do got those small hands at least they included a power button here to knock off the screen also, if you go down here, you're going to see that you can um, change themes right here. So if you change and edit themes, they have a catalog of themes. So that's cool that you have theming at this price. So that's pretty much my positive aspects on this phone right here. All right, guys, so let's hop into camera. And you're going to see here is the camera. Let me pull in my mouse over here, my Microsoft mouse, so we can do a picture thing here. But here is the camera software, and it's pretty good. Um, overall, it was a little bit confusing at first to see that there was no icon for the selfie, but you have your camera right here, and you go right here, and this is easy, actually. Now you have, once you notice that it's right there, now you can just hit selfie, you can hit panorama, or anything like that, and it's real simple to do. So once you hit that, you can just take a picture really quick. Focusing speeds are pretty solid, and you also, once you tap video, it starts recording. Over here, you have a few manual settings, such as ISO, EV, AWB auto white balance and then you have other settings here like storage locations and things like that Also, you have you can change your flash real easily right there But overall the camera has been pretty solid for this price point Not bad at all if this was in a flagship device. I would not be happy with it But um, this is not a flagship device and now let's take a look at some real-world camera samples right now and enjoy that So What is up guys Nick here, and this is the front-facing camera of the HTC Desire 626 as I pan around you can see and this is the audio that you're gonna get on the HTC Desire as you can see so that's a sample of the front-facing camera 
All right guys, so now you're taking a look at the rear camera on the HTC Desire 626. No tripod here. We're here at Horner Park, Chicago, Illinois. As you can see, a little bit of a cloudy day, partly cloudy, but this is 720p and I just wanna show you a little bit of the quality here. Uh, it's okay, not the greatest in the world, but it's not gonna disappoint either. As you can see, getting close up on the leaves. And that's pretty much a back sample of the HTC Desire 626 camera. Alright guys, now that you've seen the rear camera and the front camera, what we're going to do is take a couple of pictures outdoors and maybe later on at night. But if not, just take these samples and, you know, judge them for yourself. And let's get into that right now. Alright guys, let's talk about battery life and there's not much to say other than the battery life has been pretty good for this device with a 720p HD screen, uh, HD screen, HD screen and the software being, you know, 210 processor with Android Lollipop, this battery life has been pretty good and I don't think you're going to have too much troubles getting it through a full day. Um, as long as you're not beating it up, like, you know, constant, constantly every second using it, any phone's going to die in that way. Overall, it's easily able to get through a full day. Although I did know that the battery dripped quite quickly when using the camera a lot as also playing games. So if you're playing games a lot and, you know, taking a lot of pictures and videos, the camera or the battery will drop quicker. But overall, the battery life is a solid eight out of 10 in my opinion. So what are my overall conclusions of the HTC Desire 626? I think that this device is a device for somebody who wants an HTC device but doesn't want to spend the top dollar. Also somebody who wants a budget Android phone that also offers clean, slick design. And, uh, and it's not going to be for everybody, but if you like HTC's design language, which uh, according to the media, and a lot of people don't, but that's just the media. We don't got to listen to them. And then um, if you want a device that's going to offer you um, a good camera at this price point, this is going to be the device for you as well. But there is so much competition in this space that it's hard for me to say that this is the best device in the budget arena because I really just don't think it is. Um, I think you should check out the competition before you go ahead and jump on this HTC. But if you're an HTC fan, this is probably the best you're going to get at this really low price point. Right now it's $109 on Boost. Um, I don't know what it is for T-Mobile, I'm 129 but I'll leave all the links down below in the description to Amazon, um, T-Mobile, Boost Mobile, and all those other things. And um, yeah, that pretty much wraps up this review. Uh, pretty decent device. Let me know what you guys think of the HTC Desire 626. Would you pick up this device? What are your thoughts on this device? Go ahead and drop those in the comments down below. Also, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. Uh, link is down below in the description. That's where I post when future upcoming reviews are going down and anything and everything tech. I'm always updating over there so you guys can know when videos are coming out because I can't really just put a post, a tweet on YouTube. It just doesn't make sense. But that pretty much ends this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please be sure to go ahead and support it with a like. If you didn't enjoy it, go ahead and hit that thumbs down. Um, subscribe for more. Share this video with anybody deciding to pick this up. And I will catch you all in the next episode. Be well and peace.